Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week's video is slightly shorter than usual. I'm just going to focus on one technique, but I think it's going to be really cool. I've just tried it out in a live video and it went super well. So I'm going to concentrate on that one technique and that is grunging up some metal. The backstory to this chest is that it was previously painted for me quite a while ago and I'm repainting it and I'm going to go for a really grungy kind of chippy industrial look. This lock is original and it's got some really nice patina on it so I'm going to try and replicate that. I've just done it over in a live class and it actually turned out pretty good so I'm going to show you how I did it. So first things first, when I first painted this chest I primed the whole lot with Dixie Bell Slick Stick and that's a primer for slippy surfaces which is metal, plastic, laminate, glass, those kind of things. So it was primed with Slick Stick and then I painted it using Plum Crazy from the Chalk Mineral Paint range and then I did some black wax detail on it. So because I used Best Down Wax which is water based, I was able to just paint straight over it which I've done with this custom red colour. I'll drop the colours below that I used so that you can see them, but it's a custom mix red from Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint range. And then I have, all I've done is I've used Dixie Bell's Gold Gilding Wax for these corner pieces. So I'm gonna try and replicate this look, but on here. So first of all, I have applied one coat of Gold Gilding Wax on those corner pieces with a little brush. It's pretty much full coverage. There is a little bit of red peeking through, but it's pretty much full coverage. And that gets you to this stage. The next product that I'm gonna use is patina paint. This color is bronze, and it's gonna give me that deeper kind of grungy look. So I'm going to use some of the Dixie Bell Artist Brushes, just because it, obviously it's a really small area, any other brush is just gonna to be too big. And I'm just going to add a small amount of the patina paint onto my brush. I'm gonna take the excess off. You can see how full coverage this paint is. This paint is actually designed to be used with a spray, which when you spray it on the paint, it activates the paint. It's got actual little tiny pieces of metal in the paint. It activates that and creates a patina, depending on the color that you use. I'm not gonna be using it with a spray today. I'm just gonna be using it as a standalone paint, which you absolutely can do. So I'm just gonna take the excess off, and with that small amount of product on my brush, I'm gonna start layering up some of this color. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I'm using a water-based product over the top of an oil-based product, which is usually not advised. However, in this case, it's only a small area. It's only decorative, so it's gonna be absolutely fine. And what I would say, a word of advice, is for you to not buff the gilding wax. That's just gonna give a more matte finish, which will allow the patina paint to sit over the top of it much better than if you do buff it. So already you can see that that has started to knock that gold down and it's not quite so blingy and shiny and in your face. I'm just gonna blast it off with a hairdryer and then we're gonna carry on layering some other products. The next color that I'm gonna use to layer up over the top is Dixie Belle's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Caviar. Again, I'm gonna use a small brush and I'm just gonna take a really small amount of the paint and take off the excess on a rag. Again, this is gonna add some shading and it's just gonna help with the authenticity, get my words out, and hopefully create something that looks a little bit more like this. So it's really up to you where you want to add your shading with the caviar and how much you want to add as well. Generally speaking, the more caviar you use, the grungier it's going to look. So I'm just going to sort of concentrate around those sort of studded pieces and also around sort of like the corners and edges. The amount of paint that I'm using is absolutely minuscule because I'm just slowly adding the layers. It's much easier to do it that way than it is to go in too heavy handed and then try and remove some. 
I am also referring back to that centre lock piece, which is uh, authentic patina, which is always handy if you are trying to copy a patina or a particular look, it is always handy to keep referring back to that image or thing, um, just as a point of reference to keep you kind of on track. And then the next step is um, I'm going to use a toothbrush. You can get specialist brushes for this, but a toothbrush works absolutely fine. And I also find that if you add a tiny bit of water to your paint, it just loosens the consistency and allows it to splat better. So all I'm doing is just adding some caviar chalk mineral paint with a little bit of water in it onto my toothbrush and just flicking the bristles so that sort of specks of paint go onto my corner pieces. Again, it's up to you how heavy handed you'd be with the splats. I sort of built it up gradually because I can have a tendency to be quite heavy handed with stuff. Um, and if you do want to keep the areas around that splatted area free from splats, it's a good idea to tape off. I didn't because I hadn't yet finished painting. And then the last thing I did is applied a thin coat of gator hide. This is gonna give me a little bit of a shine, so it's less of a matte look, because I did want a little bit of a shine with this to make it look like metal. And it's also gonna give a really good durability to all of those products that we've just applied. So this is the finished look, complete with the finished paintwork, which I'm really, really pleased with. Here's the finished shot. If you've got any questions on the technique that I've just shown you, please drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.